This video covers how to use bones to make your animations move into form. Bones allow you to create a skeleton for your graphics. Bones are an intuitive and natural way to animate multiple connected parts such as an arm, flag, or tree branch. But you can also use bones to deform shapes in all kinds of creative ways. To create a bone chain, activate the tool in the Create Tools menu or press B. Click to start creating your first bone. The first click defines the start of the bone, and the second click is the end. Each subsequent click creates another bone in the chain. It helps to already have your artwork in place when doing this, so you can make sure your bones align with your graphics. When you're finished, hit Escape or activate the Select tool with V. Since you haven't connected anything yet, you can select the joints and reposition your bones. Note that the joints don't exist in the hierarchy. There are controls to help you change the property of bones like length and rotation. When animating bones, you'll be animating these length and rotation properties. Also note that only the first bone in your chain has a position property. We sometimes refer to this bone as the root bone. The other bones inherit their position based on the parent bone, its rotation, and its length. If you want to add additional bones to an existing chain, select a joint, activate the bone tool, and begin placing the bones. Keep in mind that you can add new bones from any joint in the chain. There are two ways to connect your graphics to bones, through the hierarchy and through binding. Creating a hierarchical connection between your graphics and bones is the easiest way to manipulate your graphics with bones. Drag and drop your graphics onto a bone in the hierarchy, just like you would with a group. Now, when you move the bone, it also moves any graphics nested underneath it. You might recall this parent-child relationship from our hierarchical relationships video. Be sure to check that out if you missed it. The other method for connecting bones to graphics is called binding. Binding allows you to connect your bones to specific parts of a path, which means you can deform your graphics without having to cut them up to match every bone in your skeleton. With binding, you can connect multiple bones to a single shape. You can also use it to warp shapes in unique ways, like this page turning effect or this rotating orange. The first step in binding your graphics to your bones is to select the path you want and enter Edit Vertices mode. To do this, hit Enter on your keyboard. Once the bone's active, press the Bind Bones button in the inspector and add the bones. Once your bones are bound, you need to set their weights. When you select a vertex or bezier handle, the Bind Bones section of the inspector lists the weights of each bone for your current selection. These values determine how much each bone influences the selection. Bones with 100% weight will control the vertex entirely, while bones with lower numbers will share influence. You can drag up or down on these fields to make adjustments. Note that the sum is always 100%, and the weight is automatically redistributed as you make adjustments. Before moving on to the next step, it's always best that you ensure you've weighted your shapes correctly. Check your shape by rotating each bone watching for shapes that behave differently than you intend. Repeat the process of checking and reweighting until you're happy with the results. Now that your bones and graphics are connected and everything's behaving properly, it's time to animate. Switch to animate mode by hitting tab on your keyboard. As you select each bone on the stage, various keyable properties appear in the inspector including length, rotation, scale, and if it's the root bone, position. Let's set some keys on the timeline to animate our bones. Use the Set Key button next to the rotation in the inspector to set a key for the current value. Move the playhead forward in time and rotate the bone directly on the stage. This automatically sets a new key in the timeline. Typically, we recommend manipulating the bones themselves to set keys because it's easier to create the exact keys you want, but you also have the option to move the joints. If you use the joints, it's crucial to understand that the resulting transformation will set length and rotation keys for multiple bones in the chain. That's it for bones. Hopefully you've seen that bones are a versatile tool that can help you achieve many different effects. We'll see you in the next video.